The House of Representatives says it will prioritize issues of local government, electoral and judicial reforms. And parents uh, give federal and Kaduna state government 48 hours to rescue abducted students. A plus politics starts now. I am Justin Akadoye. The House of Representatives says it will prioritize issues of local government, electoral and judicial reforms in amending the 1999 Constitution. Deputy Speaker of the House, Idris Wase said this at a retreat organized for members of the House Ad Hoc Committee on Constitution Review on Monday in Abuja. Discussion with me is legal practitioner Ajibola Kaka and political analyst Adigbenro Nuruddin. Uh, many thanks for joining us, uh, gentlemen, on Plus Politics tonight. Well, let's talk about some of the issues uh, that were raised uh, just yesterday. But before we bring on our guest, uh, let's just give a bit of a snippet of how it went down yesterday at the National Assembly. Very thorny and bony issue that we need to put our heads together to ensure we, we, we liberate that particular system for the benefit of Nigerians. And I believe it is important that type of government, if it's working very fine, a lot of the things that are happening today, be it security, be it uh, uh, social infrastructure, will be addressed if the structure of local government is functional, is made to make it functional, and it should work in the manner that it used to be before. Uh, I think that should be a serious improvement in that aspect. Uh, there is this issue of women participation. I think it is important that we also address this one. We should not shy away from it. I believe uh, we should be gen gender sensitive. Other countries have done it. And I think we can also be. But uh, upside, the other side of the divide that we are looking, or other side of the mirror that we are looking at, is that in other clients, what they did was to create special constituencies for the women. And I think that also could be achieved in Nigeria. Uh, yeah. Esther Plus Politics, thanks for staying with us. Uh, we have Abnuruddin Adigbun, a political analyst who will be dissecting all of these issues uh, with us this evening. And many thanks once again, Nuruddin, for joining us. Uh, looking back at all the hullabaloo that, uh, you know, has drilled the 1999 constitution with many Nigerians saying that uh, it is not workable for the country as uh, such as ours. The lawmakers are set to review uh, this uh, constitution and they have outlined the judicial electoral and local government reforms as key. In your opinion, do you really think that uh, judiciary reforms are long overdue to be amended? Uh, what happened there is that um, you see constitutional review is good, but the way it's been done in Nigeria is another thing. How come that it is the second tenor of every president, that is when the issue of the uh, constitutional review is being taken as so that hard. Why not from the first tenor? On the issue of these um, with uh, local government, it's good. And uh, other ones are so good because majority of the state governors in Nigeria have turned the local government into the house outlets of the state government. So reviewing it and making them functional and also creating a room for them to have their own autonomy and perform very well in the area of the electoral process, it needs to be worked on. The issue of uh, having a sole administrator also needs to be worked on. And also the tenor needs to be worked on. You have across the country, we are a lot of uh, councillors, chairmen, they were using three years, some even two years, and the rest. So to me, constitutional review is good if it's going to be having a diligent approach to it. Okay, let's talk about the local government uh, review for one moment. Now you have outlined um, the tenor uh, for the local government chairman and of course, uh, you know, other issues. But then again, another thing is that of finance. You know, lately, you know, when the Federal Allocation Accounts Committee meets in Abuja every other month, uh, 
What we have is that um, both the state and uh, the state commissioner for finance go to Abuja, you know, a cap in hand to receive the monthly allocation as it were. But most of the times we find that, that the local government are mere, almost like, uh, well, I say an annex of the state government as they actually just do the beatings of the state government. How do we ensure that this tier of government works as it should? Uh, one thing there is that in the area of the finances, um, it is very important that federal government needs to be very, very hard on this. And the National Assembly needs to be very, very hard on this. If a particular money is being allocated to a local government, direct to their post, and they try to move that money into the state account, such local government must be sanctioned. Because that is one of the issues that we are facing in this country. A lot of uh, local governments, to even do a petty job, they have to consult the um, House of Assembly of that particular state. To the extent that there are some certain state House of state and Assembly that can even remove a chairman <laughs> from the seat. It has happened in Lagos State. In fact, the area of the finances is being controlled by House of Assembly. If you go around the countries, you will know that local government is suffering seriously under the state governments. What is important there is this. Any money that is being shown out to them National Assembly must make sure that they were well teleguided and they were well scrutinized. All right, I know I would come back to you yet again, but let's uh, bring uh, in a uh, legal practitioner right now, uh, Barista Ajibola Kaka. Many thanks for staying with us. Let's get your legal perspective on all of this matters right now. I want you to talk specifically on what the retired justice said yesterday as he was bowing out of office. He said uh, most of the decisions of the Supreme Court are no longer uh, relevant as we speak. So in your opinion, would you say that uh, the reforms for the judiciary uh, are long overdue. I would say that the reform is long overdue, but uh, the reason why the Honorable J.S.C. Justice of the Supreme Court said that uh, most of those judgments are no longer, you know, relevant, so to say, is because the society itself is dynamic. And uh, law as an instrument of social changes, then the, it has to move with the dynamism of the society. Because law cannot be, it's just like uh, saying that somebody cannot be an island unto himself. As a result, as the society changes, the law equally changes to meet with the test of time. So that is the reason for the statement made by the Honorable Justice Rose Viver. And as, as such, some of our laws too has to be uh, you know, overhauled, mm. completely overhauled, because some of them are even dead that we need to wake them up. We need to rejuvenate, to review, to be able to cope with the changes that we are experiencing currently in the society. Right. I want to agree with him. Okay, let's talk about another angle that uh, the uh, that was raised yesterday at um, the ad hoc um, meeting. Specifically, they talked about um, electoral uh, reforms. Still going back to Justice uh, Rhodes uh, Vivo, he said that due to the difficulty petitioners encounter in providing electoral uh, uh, fraud, the Electoral Act should be amended to put the burden of uh, proving the legitimacy of an election on the Independent National Electoral uh, Commission, INEC. What are your thoughts cons uh, considering all of that? Well, uh, the burden needs to be, I agree with him, because most of this rigging that occurred during the election processes are perpetrated by the electoral body. It is in connivance with the electoral body if the electoral body uh, did not, uh, do not make themselves susceptible to all those corrupt practices, election malpractices, then they, uh, they, they, the politicians cannot engage in the rigging of the election. 
And that is the more reason why we are clamoring that the uh, we are we're clamoring that the elect the uh what is it called the Act of criminal they should they uh, they should try and criminalize election fraud. Okay. So that people who engage in fraud and in illegalism during election are brought to book so that they will be prosecuted. Not that they will just be, you know, taken to court. They have to be charged to court and prosecute them like a common criminal. And the Electoral Act needs to be amended along this line so that the electoral body, the INEC, will be responsible for any act of criminality that emanated from election uh, pro proceedings. All right, uh, let's go back to Nuruddin Adigbar again. Uh, with this uh, review set to take place um, very soon, uh, the issue of restructuring still comes to mind. Restructuring means several things to several people. Devolution of power, state policing. In your opinion, now, what should the main discussion be right now, even as the lawmakers go to review the Constitution vis-a-vis -vis the call for restructuring? Well, um, in Nigeria, a lot of people are opposed to of different things. But in the context of the problem that is facing us in the country now, restructuring is so germane to our development. One, in the area of finances, there needs to be a lot of sense of restructuring in that aspect. A situation in which a central government will take a larger chunk without having a state, without having people to cater for, without having a geographic location, apart from FCT Abuja, then that area needs to be restructured. In the area of security, there should be a state network that a lot of governors are creating now should be incorporated and giving them the chance to be part of the security architecture in the country. Civil defense will have played a major role in the hands of the governor to really buttress what the military and the other security agencies are doing. So it's very important. We need to restructure our security architect so that apart from the federal power, there should be a state power that can augment security in every autonomous state, even down to the local government. Then another area that is so important is the area of fundamental human rights. Mm. It's very, very important because if we don't restructure throughout that particular time, then we is going to debar our development. For instance, now, as a Nigerian, the issue of indigenous should be scrapped. If we are talking about unity, if we are talking about upliftment, that area needs to be tweaked upon. Then another thing again is that the room for corruption. That is why we need to restructure the way state laws have been done, and also our courts need to be restructured in that particular area. You know that we have a penal code in the north, we have criminal code in the south, there should be a way to really harmonize our law that will be in uniformity mm. with what is going to happen within the northern part and the southern parts. Although, head of every state can still stay, All but right. there should be a way for uniformity and uh, so that the issue of corruption that has bedeviled this country mm. can be tackled at the local government, state government, and also federal government. All right, thank you, Nuruddin. Let's bring in uh, Barrister Kaka once um, again. Uh, I know you're very passionate about constitution review, but specifically, I would want you to talk about um, devolution of powers vis-a-vis, uh, uh, -vis, uh, you know, the local government um, administration, and of course, uh, the issue of our restructuring as uh, Nuruddin has um, posed it so far. Well, when we talk of uh, restructuring in Nigeria, and the evolution of power. The constitution is clear about this. We have three tiers of government. 
the federal, state level, and the local government. The federal government, they have too much power, enormous power, that is affecting others from uh, functioning properly. The federal government, yes, they are functioning, the state is functioning, but at times, the federal government do with enormous you know, influence on the state. And the most affected of it all is the local government. And the, this local government, they are the, you know, the grassroots people. The people at the grassroots are totally disconnected from good governance. And as such, the states generally are not allowing the local government to function, not even in, uh, in minimally, not to talk of maximally. The revenue that's supposed to come to them are being cornered by the state government. And as such, even when the constitution says that there must be a clear cut separation of power, Separation of power, not, not, not among the organs of the government now, that is the judiciary, legislature, and the executive, but among the three tiers of government. When we don't even have clear cut separation of power within the, uh, you know, uh, the, among the organs of the government, they're not to talk of the local government, but the federal legislature, they have the opportunity now to ensure that the local government, to ensure the, uh, the autonomy of the local government so that they don't depend cap in hand to go and be at the mercy of the state government. They need to develop the grassroots. They need to develop the local government areas so that the people will start to enjoy the dividends of democracy. So they have every opportunity now to make that changes, to write their name in gold, so that they will say, oh, it is during this National Assembly that we have a complete aut autonomy for local government, so that the people will be able to enjoy what we call democracy. As it is now, that's why the fact that President Buhari ordered that the, uh, the, the, the revenue of the local government should go directly to the local government. They, 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 still, they still, still find a way to corner the revenue from them. And as such, they are not performing at all. all right. It is what the state decided to give to them that they you know, feed on. By the time they pay the salary and whatever, there's nothing left for them. All right, Barista Kaka, let me butt in right now. In your opinion, do you think that if the states, I mean, sorry, the local government are in charge of their own financing, we will see better development, you know, more representation, and of course, um, the people at the grassroots would enjoy better governance? By the grace of God, the people at the grassroots will enjoy better government and the living standard will be high and uh, the, you know, uh, more, uh, the, the living standard will be improved because the people at the local government, they are alive to their responsibility now. They know what it takes to be uh, 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 in government. They know their rights. And as a result, if the money is given to the local government directly, the people will be able to monitor it All and right. because they are together in the local government there. All right, let's Any talk to you again. Any of the executive okay. that refused to perform, mm. All right, uh, any Din. executive that refused to perform, yeah. they will have a way of chasing them out. Okay, fine. There will be better development. All right, Nuruddin, let's talk about uh, one other issue that um, uh, was mentioned uh, yesterday by the committee. Uh, Wase said it will also address um, agitations of um, increased uh, women uh, participation in national affairs and politics and calling for the creation of a special constituency for women as part of the ongoing uh, review process. How do you react to that? Uh, 
anything called fundamental human rights, you you really have to fight for it. So seeding a particular constituency or some certain powers of the women is a big no to me. Mm. But there is a way that we can make sure that a certain percentage has been given irrespective of uh, the party to women. For instance, now, do you really think, Nui, do you really think that can actually fly again at the National Assembly? It had been presented before, the 35% affirmative action for women, but then it did not exactly see the light of day. Well, one thing, there, well, it's going to be very, very difficult, but I can agree that if we can try much as possible to have a German bill that will not give like seven, 35%, but that is going to make sure, for instance, any, go any governor that wants to be governor must have a deputy as a female. Any chairman of the local government must have a woman as a deputy. If we start from that particular affair, I think we can now extend it to the angle of the legislative arm of government. Because with the Harris, of culture and values we have in Nigeria. For instance, in another part of the country, it's going to be very, very difficult because of the religion, because ethnicity, because of culture. So for her story, even move from one stage to another, we can say that every governor must have female as a deputy. All right, every thank chairman you. All right, thank of you, the Nuridin. local government must Most also have female as a deputy. deputy. All right, back to Baister Kakana. I also want you to react to that special constituency for women. Plus, uh, let's talk about uh, some of the issues that we have uh, right now. Indeed, security is the major, or one of the major problems uh, in the nation's polity. Would this constitution amendment or uh, review uh, set to take place soon, how do we begin to change the narrative vis-a-vis -vis call for state policing and all of other issues that have uh, made headlines recently? Well, I've always been an advocate of state policing. They, we should have, if we are talking of devolution of power from federal to state and to local government, and we are talking of autonomy, all that it entails should go along with it. Let there be state police so that they will be able to provide adequate security for the citizen. And it is why we have the, the, local, uh, the state police, even at the local government level, let, there be, let, let them establish a security system. They know their people and they speak their language. It's not a situation whereby an Aousa policeman will be drafted to the Yoruba land, or let me say to Ijebu or uh, Egba, where they do not understand the language or the dialect spoken by them. Okay. And as a result, they may not be able to provide adequate security for them. Whereby a Yoruba man is being taken to the north, an Igbo being taken to the north, an Aousa man being taken to the east, where they do not understand their languages, as it will be very difficult for them to monitor adequately the mm. security system. It is better we have a state police, then the security risk will be reduced to the minimum level. So right, thank I you think so much. that one mm. will, uh, will give us a kind of leverage so that the, 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 the insecurity we are experiencing in the country now will we'll be, be reduced, reduced All right, to thank the you so much, minimum. Kaka. All right, indeed, uh, we have been speaking about um, constitution review in the first half of the show. And many thanks to Barista Ajibo Lakaka and, of course, uh, Nuruddin Adigmaru, political analyst uh, who joined us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, a prayer to the to the federal and Kaduna state government to return their children safely. In a moment, stay with us. <laughs>